Bitcoin is becoming more popular and it's only natural that there are more and more applications around Bitcoin. So there's this awesome list by DWF Ventures that did a layer two classification for Bitcoin. So basically what layer two is, is basically either a side chain or some kind of a protocol that tries to take uh, some of a burden of computations from mainnet of Bitcoin and put that somewhere else or put some of the applications on this layer too. You probably heard about Stacks, this is probably uh, the biggest layer too, uh, but there are a couple of other projects as well on this list that uh, are worth checking out. I, for example, did a video recently about Merlin Chain as well, uh, and we'll probably do about some of the other projects that you can find on this list here. So we're going to discuss the list as well as uh, the potential implications. First of all, following this uh, thread by DWF Ventures. So basically uh, the problem in general for uh, for blockchain, for any kind of blockchain is that uh, you have three issues. You have security, decentralization and scalability. And usually you have to pick two out of three. It's very hard to have all three. Uh, and this is where layer two are coming into place uh, because they try to take the scalability uh, issue away because usually you can do pretty well with security and decentralization. This is what basically Bitcoin solves, but then it's becoming harder and harder to scale because you start paying a lot for different fees. This is also something that uh, is happening with uh, Ethereum because uh, it Ethereum gas fees as well as Bitcoin gas fees are pretty high and that's why, why the entire movement of layer two is starting. So as you can see here, Bitcoin and Ethereum stack with the core philosophies of blockchain technology, opting to prioritize maximizing decentralization and security, sacrificing scalability in the early stages. This is only natural also in the beginning because you don't have much scale, so you want to focus on decentralization and making everything secure. Now, layers two were two is created to improve on this lack of scalability while hopefully maintaining the other two. Uh, of course, it all depends on the particular kind of layer two because you always have a team behind a particular layer two and uh, it depends how much they value, for example, decentralization. You have entirely centralized layer twos and that's also fine for some of the applications, but you have to uh, have that in mind that you take up uh, of, on some of the uh, decentralization here. Ethereum scalability solutions came in the form of higher throughput and lower cost. Bitcoin's lack of programmability made improving scalability a much tougher task. And this is where uh, side chains are coming into play. One of the first attempts at Bitcoin layer to scaling sidechains like Liquid BTC uh, provided a programmable layer to build more complex use cases like DeFi while remaining, remaining interoperable with Bitcoin via a two-way peg or bridge. This is Liquid Network. Similar thing is happening uh, with Stacks. Uh, this is also a, a sidechain that's basically doing a similar stuff and it's super popular with things like NFTs, different meme coins and so on. Uh, however, this does not fully inherit Bitcoin's decentralization and security since, since it relies on its own consensus and settlement layers. To better inherit Bitcoin security, Layer 2s started exploring using Bitcoin merge mining to secure the infrastructure. So this is a new paradigm uh, that they're trying to do and merge mining uh, is done by extending Bitcoin miners hash rate to also secure another blockchain reusing the proof of work consensus. So it's if I were to compare it, it's a little bit like restaking for Ethereum, but it's done on a proof of work consensus. And this prime example for here is basically Syscoin, uh, uses it to create data availability layer secured by Bitcoin. And you can basically, uh, you'll find of course the link down below to this uh, thread as well as to uh, entire table. I will show you in a moment. Uh, so you can read more about particular projects here as well because you can jump in into Syscoin uh, analysis and more. So comparing Syscoin's hash rate to Bitcoin's, we can see that about half of Bitcoin miners are securing Syscoin's infrastructure. Is this enough? In Ethereum's case, rollups seem to be the premier way to scale a blockchain as proofs as are posted and secured by the entire network. So another example here is BitVM and the problem with rollups on Bitcoin is the Bitcoin script lacks the capability to verify proofs. Fortunately, the limitation changes with the recent introduction of BitVM which makes any computation verifiable on Bitcoin without forking. So that's pretty cool. And you have uh, all those things related to uh, Bitcoin uh, VM here. 
And if you want to read more about how it's done, basically you can read the thread again, but basically the, 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 this is the way to implement uh, logic using existing script language and uh, it makes for uh, some of the computations possible and verification possible. Uh, so this allows also to have any computation optimistically verified instead of executing it directly on Bitcoin, opening the door to optimistic rollups like BitLayer Labs. Uh, so you have also this, uh, this optimistic rollups, of course, on uh, Ethereum. Uh, and here in this ecosystem of Bitcoin, they're trying to uh, have something similar, but uh, with the uh, tweaks and changes because we were talking about proof of work and having this hash rate as well. Uh, so there are a couple of things as well. So you can definitely go into BitVM and, uh, and uh, see how it works exactly. And other Bitcoin rollups like B Squared Network, Bison Labs and Lumibit L2, they are all here, here on the list. Uh, and you can have a look at, uh, look at that. So this really shows how far Bitcoin scalability has come. There are many teams working on that, many approaches as you, as you can see, not only side chains, but different kind of rollups, different kind of L2 infrastructure, and people are thinking actively about how to develop the entire ecosystem. So it's definitely worth taking a moment to look at it because this is some kind of a beta play. So especially if, you, uh, if you're into Bitcoin and you believe in the Bitcoin future, then having a look at that mag might make sense uh, because uh, it they might grow much faster than the Bitcoin itself, which has a very substantial market cap. Of course, this is also a huge risk uh, because some of those pro Bitcoin will probably stay around for, for very, very long time. Uh, those projects, uh, I do not, uh, do not know that uh, and no one knows. So again, not a financial advice, but be careful out there. Uh, uh, there's definitely uh, something interesting here going on, but it's worth uh, doing your own research before jumping to any of these projects. Now, finally, if you want to jump into the, uh, the, these projects, you can check out uh, the Bitcoin layer tool list that I put on the on the website of pccrypto.co, uh, where you can see the entire, um, the entire table in an easy form, uh, as well as the links. And uh, I will add a couple of other things very, very soon. Uh, the link, for example, to this thread as well. Uh, generally speaking, Bitcoin's uh, ecosystem is definitely growing, DeFi ecosystem as well as Ordinal's ecosystem. Uh, so we're see seeing some, some of the playbook uh, from Ethereum 2000, 2000, 2020, 2021 coming into the Bitcoin ecosystem, which makes it very interesting because it's not exactly the same. It rhymes, but it's not the same. It doesn't repeat itself. Uh, so it's very, very interesting. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.